Hello. Welcome to The Revealing. I am, once again, your host, Pavarotti. Some of my subscribers call me Old Pav. And I'm here to try to bring you some clarity on this Idaho 4 case. But first, as a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. These are my opinions. I'm not here to slander anyone. I do intend to speculate. But with all that being said, let's get started. So, I watched hours of the recent court hearing. And what I like to do now after the court hearing is I like to sit back, look at some of the other content creators, videos and takeaways of what they watched, and marvel. In fact, some of them have made videos declaring the court admits that Mr. Koberger didn't stalk the victims. Well, I guess I could say that's vindication for my video last week. I mean, that's what we ascertained in that court hearing. Now, in this court hearing, it was confirmed not only by the prosecutor, but also by the judge. Yes, the judge in this hearing flat out stated Mr. Koberger did not stalk those victims. Stated it as a fact. And I felt like that was a, an interesting thing for the judge to state. Um, other discussion about, and by the way, I'm not going to play a bunch of clips from the court hearing. I mean, if you, if you need verification of what I'm saying, please feel free to go watch it. It's, it's quite long. There's, there's a lot of interesting things in there. Uh, that was my biggest takeaway was when the judge said Mr. Koberger did not stalk those victims. Other things, though, that were mentioned were very interesting. The defense actually finally put the prosecutor on blast. I mean, they busted him out really, really, really good um, as he was stating they were disseminating, you know, harmful information about the defense, which 90% of it came from the PCA. They put their expert on the stand and he had a slideshow and his first slide showed the prosecutor back, I think it was December 30th, 2022, in his press conference announcing the probable cause affidavit would be made public soon and for all of the news media to disseminate that information to everyone. And that's where it all started. So they, they played that clip, which made the prosecutor look like a, um, an AWS. So that was kind of cute. Other things that were mentioned, it got kind of heated. But other things that were mentioned was how half of the items in the probable cause affidavit probably weren't true. And, and you know, just a, a bunch of other stuff. But here's what I want to report to you today. Because as I watch this hearing, my takeaways, as you know, seem to be different than everyone else's. Number one, when the judge states as fact, Mr. Koberger never stalked those victims. I want you to think about that for just a second. If the judge in the case knows enough about the evidence in the case to be able to firmly state as fact that there is no evidence that Mr. Koberger stalked one of those victims. In fact, he said Mr. Koberger did not stalk one of those victims. That seems to be a level of knowledge about the evidence in the case that 
we're led to believe that the defense doesn't even fully have at this point, right? With all the talk of discovery, all the discovery items, the prosecution hasn't sent the defense, and the judge perplexed on why the prosecution hasn't sent the defense all the discovery. I mean, that's all the evidence. But somehow the judge, maybe he was sent all the discovery and he went through 53 terabytes of information because he knows beyond a shadow of a doubt in his words that Mr. Koberger never stalked those victims. So what does that tell us? Hmm. I'll let you know here in just a second what that tells us. That and other things that I noticed in this hearing, it all points to one big picture. And folks, I'm not sure that unless you pay attention to this stuff the way I do, that you're going to be able to grasp this, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right, and I'll let you start trying to wrap your, mouth, your mind around this. The actual hearing that's going to take place against Mr. Koberger and the defense today was more adamant than ever stating we believe in the innocence of our client we believe our client is innocent and we're working on behalf of that and we're honored and privileged to be working for our client because we believe he's innocent that was some pretty strong statements but what I've ascertained from all of this, plain as day, nobody else sees it for some reason, is the case that is going to be tried when this thing actually finally goes to trial has absolutely nothing to do with any of the narratives that you've heard from the media and 90% of these content creators out there, it has nothing to do with any of it. And they verified that today in court. Absolutely nothing. This case, the facts of this case, are going to be tried on one thing and one thing only. And that is the level of participation that Mr. Koberger played in the atrocity. When this goes to trial, the defense's argument, the prosecution's argument, is all going to be determinative on did Mr. Koberger actually get out of the vehicle or did he simply just drive the vehicle? What was his knowledge? of what was going to be taking place if he did not get out of the vehicle. And what was his knowledge of the circumstances after the fact if he did not get out of the vehicle? That, ladies and gentlemen, is what the trial will consist of. For a long time, I thought that the trial itself would be would play out in a way where they didn't really want the true information to get out there to the public. I now realize through things that I've learned over the last three or so weeks that absolutely everything in this case will come to light during the trial. They're going to put it all out there. And when they do, there's going to be so many shocked individuals when they watch it. It is going to be, it's going to be a funny thing to, to watch unveiled. So why do I say that? Well, many things that were said in that court hearing today indicate that. And also, as I mentioned, over the last three or four weeks, ever how long it's been, I've, I've been committed to this Koberger is innocent beyond a reasonable doubt series that I had planned on doing and I've done a few videos about. And I have done deep dives into court documents, potential evidence, 
you know, admissible or not admissible evidence, different scenarios, history. Oh my goodness, I've, I've engulfed myself. And during that time, I've watched very few content creators videos out there, but I will pop one or two on a night. And of course, when I do, I have to look at, you know, things like 4chan posts. I mean, anybody that, any kid in school that gets mad or doesn't like one of his classmates can now just go on to 4chan and make up some stuff about his, you know, his peers and make it, make them look guilty of something and type it on some obscure website. And approximately a year and a half later, a bunch of people on the internet will go look up those posts and claim them to be fact and do videos over and over about, oh, we've solved the case. I mean, people that are doing videos today, maybe in a year from now, will pull up their videos and go, wait a minute, they seem to know a lot about the case. Maybe they were involved. I mean, uh, it's just in theory after theory after theory that are is just so ridiculous. So, I'm sorry for those of you out there that I'm going to disappoint with this, but I can no longer continue my Koberger is innocent until proven guilty scenario. The best I can do for you is Koberger may not have been the one that went into the house and committed the atrocity scenario. But he was in a car. He drove the car. I believe he went in the house. And I, I can't continue to follow a follow something that I, I truly don't believe to be true. And just because it creates content, I don't do that. What I have learned though, during this deep dive, is a lot of extra information that reaffirmed what I've said up to this point. However, there were, there were a few things that I did get wrong. small details. There's some players involved in this that I didn't think was involved in it that I now fully believe had a part. I'm going to go through in my videos coming up, so I just wanted to let you know. I'm going to go through and I'm going to put these pieces together because when you take things like dates of instances, search warrants, redactions, arrests, the picture becomes crystal clear. I'm going to fill in those blanks that I hadn't already filled in. I'm going to connect the dots from the organizations to the people, connect the dots on how this thing was set up, how was Mr. Koberger, how did he really have a connection to these victims? I'm going to lay that one out for you. It's clear now. What were those roommates' roles in this? What did they know before the incident occurred? What did they know during and what did they know after and where are they at now? I'm going to fill in those blanks for you as well. I'm going to tie this thing up in a tighter bow than I tied it up for you before because it's all crystal clear. How did they really get to Koberger? When did they really get to Koberger? So all the information you know about that is absolutely incorrect. I'm going to show you how and when. But until I do... I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm about to get active again because I just want to get this information out there to you. I know you can you can take that information, you can keep it, you can throw it away, you can say it's great, call it stupid. That's that's up to you. My role here is to simply give you the clarity that the other ones out there aren't going to give you. So as always, please like, subscribe to the channel. Post your comments, post those criticisms. You know, I, you know, I like to read the criticisms. I enjoy reading the good comments as well. I enjoy reading your thoughts on this as well. And 
a lot of those subscribers, you know who you are. Some of your theories on this that I've been reading since day one, I think some of you got it pretty close. The parts that I wasn't right on, I think you were. So I'll be interested to, to read your comments for sure. And for those that have been with me since the beginning, thank you for coming back. And I certainly appreciate seeing your comments. Um, but once again, Pavarotti's out.